Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you for keeping your state free during COVID. Um, how are you going to, what's the policy plan for spreading that across the nation and holding these people accountable? Yeah, look, I mean, I think if, if you think about kind of this century, there's been three, I think, really significant events, 9-11 and the wars that followed, the financial crisis and the Great Recession, and then COVID. And, and of those three, I would say COVID had a broader impact on this society than any of them. Um, you know, as bad as 9-11 was, that was in a few spots in this country. The people that served were all volunteers. There were communities here that didn't, weren't affected at all. Even the great financial crisis, I mean, unemployment spiked, but you still had folks, um, you know, who were, who were gainfully employed. COVID affected everybody in one way or another and negatively in many respects because of how the government responded. And I think you look back, you know, March of 2020, some of the worst decisions that this government has ever made uh, were made in March of 2020. Turning the cover government over to Fauci, you know, which is what Trump did, was a huge, huge mistake. And I, I approached it different in Florida. My view was, and I thought about kind of uh, a farewell address from Dwight Eisenhower. If you read that, people remember it from the military-industrial complex warning, which was important. But he also talked about in that address that they were in an era where there was an intermingling of government and scientific research. The government was funding a lot of this stuff. And he said there's a danger that given the, that, that, that relationship, that public policy itself could be taken captive by what he called the scientific technological elite. And he said that that was uh, something that we should be very worried about. Because he said those people, and I think he's talking about people like Fauci, you know, they have such a narrow view and their agenda is not the agenda that's best for the entire country. And he says a statesman can't just subcontract out leadership to somebody like that. A statesman's got to harmonize all the different interests in society so that you're able to make decisions that are in the public interest. So for example, with COVID, they were doing things and advocating things that even for health was not good. People say, oh, you got to balance economy and health. Even health, it was bad because they were scaring people you had people having heart attacks who were too scared to go to the hospital, having strokes too scared to go to the hospital, missing checkups. They were telling people to isolate in their house. That takes a toll on people's mental health, physical health. So even on the health, what they were doing was not best for overall health. It was tunnel vision, thinking that they could somehow stop a highly contagious respiratory virus that had already spread a lot. Uh, and they didn't even have the tools to identify this. They weren't doing the antibody studies. It was a total failure of CDC, NIH, FDA, all these agencies. And the problem is, is they act like they've done a good job with this. Uh, they did not do a good job. It wasn't for states like Florida and Iowa and Georgia dragging this country out of lockdown. Uh, you would have had even more damage uh, that was done. But we have communities in this country that have not recovered from the lockdowns to this day. San Francisco has not recovered. There's others that have not recovered. I don't think you would have had the BLM riots happen the way they did if you didn't have the lockdowns. I think that created a lot of pent up uh, energy to just, to just kind of act out. And then you think of these public health bureaucrats. They're telling you, because they yell at me in Florida, oh, there's people on the beach. The governor's killing people by letting people on the beach. Oh, the people are playing golf in Florida. How awful all this stuff. And they would do that. And they basically said, you had to just isolate in your house. You shouldn't be doing anything. Then you have the BLM riots. And these same public health bureaucrats were asked, well, wait a minute. Uh, you've been saying people should stay at home. Are you saying that these people for BLM should also stay at home? And they said, no. Uh, we think that fighting racism is public health importance. And so we don't think they should have to stay at home. But the people that want to protest lockdowns, they should stay at home. And I'm just thinking to myself, what a fraud these people are. They How ridiculous are they? Yeah. And so they're lying, they're doing all this. So I'm the only candidate uh, that is going to bring a reckoning to all these agencies, CDC, FDA, NIH, uh, others, Fauci, all this stuff. Uh, we need accountability. Uh, we need it now because we can never let this happen to our country ever again. Amen.